Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Kelly, and I will be serving as your facilitator for the Brooklyn Virtual College Fair. And so just a few reminders for everyone. If you can please, um, your camera and microphone are off so that the panelists, they will not be able to see you or hear you. We wanna make sure we can hear them and all the wonderful information. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of the sessions that we have going on this evening. And so if you have an op if you have a some want to check out some more schools, please be sure to check our website for the schedule to see what else is available out there. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com back, backslash Brooklyn Tech. And so we are going to go ahead and get the evening started with our first presenter from the University of Rochester. Excellent. I'm just going to start my screen share. And would you mind just giving me a thumbs up if you can see my screen, Kelly? Is that OK? Fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. Hi, folks. My name is Erica Padilla. My pronouns are she, her. I'm the Regional Associate Director for the New York Metro Area for the University of Rochester. It's a very, very long way of saying that I'm your counselor for all students that are coming from tech. And that I'm local. I'm actually based in the greater New York City area, so I can be a little more accessible and available now that we're all coming close together again. Um, so to kind of set the, the foundation, where is Rochester? From where you're located in Brooklyn, we're about six hours away. We're in uh, the area of the state that's also known as the Finger Lakes region, about three hours south of Toronto, Canada. Um, I love to brag about the Finger Lakes region because it's an area that's known for a lot of outdoor spaces, natural beauty, certainly on campus. You get to see a lot of the colors come to life this time of year. You might see something like what you see behind me when the cherry blossoms are actually in bloom this time of year. So hopefully if you get to visit us, you get a chance to um, take in some of those colors. The University of Rochester is actually a private tier one research institution. Now an R1 institution is one that has hundreds of millions of dollars coming into it for purposes of research and innovation. So there's all kinds of interesting work happening on campus right now. For example, we were a test site for the COVID vaccine. Uh, research carries on on campus and there are a number of institutes and facilities that are all part of the University of Rochester that also are facilities available to our undergraduate students. Um, on your screen right now is the River Campus, known as the River Campus because we're surrounded by the Genesee River, and we share the River Campus with the graduate schools of engineering, education, and business. The School of Arts, Sciences, and Engineering is basically all of the graduate, uh, all of the undergraduate programs. So everything that you would be interested in studying would be offered as part of ASNE, except for Eastman which is in downtown Rochester, which is our school of music. So if anybody out there is a musician, loves music, would like to take in a show, that's an awesome thing to do on a weekend or an evening. Across the street, you can't really see it um, in this picture, is our, our medical center, as well as our school of medicine and dentistry. We actually have partnerships with several of our graduate schools, including our school of medicine for direct admission program for graduate study. For those of you out there that are thinking about going on to graduate school. Something that's really interesting to note about Rochester. <clears throat> the University of Rochester is the largest private employer in our region that presents students with a lot of wonderful opportunities for access to do things like research, to do things like having hands-on experiences with internships. So because of a lot of those resources, most of our undergraduate students prefer to live on campus. We have about 5,500 undergraduate students. They're coming from over 140 countries and every state across the union. So if you're looking at Rochester, because you want the experience of being in class with students that are coming from all parts of Asia, from all parts of the Caribbean, from New York City, from the West Coast. And that definitely infuses a lot of our student organizations. There are over 300 organizations on campus that are real great representations of all that diversity and variety. About a quarter of our students identify as being the first in their families to go to college. And roughly about a quarter of our students are actually international students coming, like I mentioned, from every part of the planet. The thing that brings everybody together, Rochester lives by our institutional motto, Meliora. Meliora means ever better. The idea that everything that we do as a community, myself as a staff member, students, um, faculty, is always towards working towards self-improvement, working towards the betterment of the human condition. That's why research is so important because everything that we do is groundbreaking so that you have a lasting affect on what's happening on the planet. But then also it influences our curriculum. Rochester does not have core classes. There's no such thing as general education requirements. So 
anybody out there is thinking about becoming an engineer, if you're really excited about doing pre-med, if you think you love theater, you can actually start taking those classes the moment that you arrive at Rochester. You cannot get excused, however, from our one requirement, and that's a writing requirement. Sorry, folks. There's no getting around that writing requirement. Everybody will have to take it. Outside of that, we're really enthusiastic about encouraging our students to study what they love, to be able to put together a curriculum that's really representative of who they are as students, as scholars, and as individuals. Because there's more time, there's more space for students to do things like study abroad, to do things like internships, Almost 80% of our undergraduate students will participate in research because there's actually more time on your hands. You also have things like a lot of students will graduate as double majors. Almost half of our students will graduate as double majors. There is an opportunity at Rochester to not just participate in research, but also find funding for your own original work. We publish an undergraduate research journal also. So graduating from Rochester, having been published is not unusual. And research is not just happening in the sciences. I know you're seeing folks with like lab coats and bleakers on your screen right now, but there's space to innovate in every discipline, in the humanities and the arts. The goal is to encourage students to create. So um, we are open. We invite you to come and visit us. We are open for tours. We're gonna to be hosting a series of information sessions on campus. On your screen right now is my contact information. Um, you also will see our application cycles. Rochester does have early decision one and two. We went test optional before the pandemic. It had nothing to do with COVID. Um, so if you are thinking about going test optional, Rochester um, basically will look at your application through a holistic review process, accounting for every other element of who you are in the process. We do have an HEOP program at Rochester. If you're wanting more information about that, certainly stay in touch with me and let me know. For students that are admitted to the University of Rochester, the university commits to meeting full demonstrated financial need. It's our effort to make sure that a Rochester education is affordable for all students. So I invite you to stay in touch with me. I'll be available to answer questions. And with that, I'm gonna to toss it right back to the next presenter. Thank you so much. Okay, so next up we have Salve Regina University. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just going to share my screen. How does that look? Okay, Kelly. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, my name is Christina Berardi, and I'm the Senior Associate Dean of Admissions at Salve Regina University. Um, we are a small school um, located right on the coast of Rhode Island, um, on an island, uh, Aquidneck Island to be exact, um, in Newport. Um, and our campus, which you can see from this beautiful picture, um, is a very unique campus um, because it is a mix of both historic and modern uh, buildings uh, located right on the coast. Um, so I am excited to share some of the things um, that I believe are most important to Salve. Uh, first and foremost is that we provide um, admission-driven education. Salve Regina was founded by the Sisters of Mercy um, and in our mission, what it reads at the end is working for a world that's harmonious, just, and merciful. And that mercy mission definitely um, comes in through not just your academic studies at Salve, but also through your co-curricular learning um, and the values that we have as an institution. Um, but of course, helping to change the world for the better is a very big mission. Um, and so the ways that we really help guide our work um, is through this compass that's in front of you. Um, we love a good nautical symbol at Salve being right on the right on the ocean, um, but this compass is one that's very important to us, not only to help guide what we do and the choices that we make as an institution, but also really our promise to you as a student. Um, we hope to teach adaptive resilience, which we know is of course a critical thing for all institutions to practice, um, but also an important thing for our students to learn um, as part of their college career. And certainly one of the reasons why we were named number 18 as one of the most transformational experiences. Um, a rigorous education, that should go without saying. Um, you need that in order to be prepared for the next step, um, regardless of what academic area you choose. 
Um, it's certainly a focus on leadership, um, but at Salve, we like to really focus on a specific type of leadership, compassionate, compassionate mercy leadership, um, which is one that we know the world needs more of. And of course, all located in an inclusive community, a place where people feel welcome, um, a place where people feel celebrated um, so that they can achieve their highest potential. Um, so I mentioned we're small, about 2,100 undergraduates. That works down to a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So you're going to have a great relationship with the people here on campus. Um, and people are coming from primarily out of state, um, a lot from the Northeast, including New York and New Jersey, up through the New England states, but also from 40 states and 24 nations. Um, and you can study many things at Salve. We have diff 60 different areas of study. Um, so even though we're a small school, there's big opportunities. Um, and all of these programs have a through line of this really strong focus on building your skill set um, and being able to take what you learn in the classroom and put it into practice. And we do that through inspiring students in this incredible setting um, that we live in right here on the coast. So whether you are working with um, diverse populations throughout our island community, um, whether you are helping um, with uh, historic preservation as part of our cultural and historic preservation program um, in the many historic spaces around us, doing cutting and research um, in our labs, um, whether you are out in the water collecting specimens and doing great inquiry-based research. Um, all of this is going to feed into um, your overall development um, as a person, but also as a practitioner. Um, and of course, all of this work and this really um, close relationship and this uh, unique experience that you get at Salve helps prepare our students for the next step. 98% um, of our respondents to our first destination survey report back they're either in a career field um, or headed to grad school just six months after commencement. Um, and so what does the application process look like for us? Um, we do have a number of different deadlines. You can see at the top, an important one to note is that if you are considering our nursing um, program, um, it is slightly more competitive because it's a direct entry program. So you do need to apply by either that early action one or early decision deadline of November 1st. Um, we use the common application um, and we are a test optional school, uh, historically test optional for the majority of our majors but test optional for all majors um, and homeschool students um, this coming year as well um, as the past few years. Um, and we do a holistic review, not just for admission to Salve, but also for our scholarship awards. Um, so we look at all those great factors that you put forward in your application, all those things that we know are going to make Salve a great fit for you. Um, and 99% of our families do receive aid from us. So a combination of both merit-based and need-based aid um, coming into Salve. Um, and we use the FAFSA for that need-based um, award package. Um, those merit scholarships come out right with your acceptance package. Um, so it's a great reason to apply early in that senior year. Um, we do hope you'll come visit us on our distinctive coastal campus. Um, and just after this, I'll drop in the chat this link. Um, so hopefully you can connect with me, but also come see our campus for yourself. We have open house coming up on uh, April 24th. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so next up we have Pace University. Hi everybody. My name is Megan and I am the Associate Director for Admission at Pace University on our New York City campus. So one thing that makes Pace unique is the Pace Path. So we wanna make sure that our students are taking advantage of everything that Pace has to offer and that New York has to offer. So what will happen is you will each have your own path. Um, and this is going to look a little different depending on what you are interested in and what you do already and what you're looking to do in the future. But we want to make sure that you are taking advantage of everything inside the classroom, outside the classroom, with our connections in New York, with mentors and advisors. So your pace path will be unique to you and you'll have a advisor to guide you along the whole way. 
In regards to majors at Pace, we have six academic schools. They're all listed here. Uh, one of our six academic schools is a law school that's available at the graduate level. So our College of Health Professions has uh, nursing and health science. Our Dyson College of Arts and Sciences has everything from psychology to economics to a school of performing arts. Our School of Law is at the graduate level, like I just mentioned. Our Lubin School of Business has accounting, management, marketing, finance, everything business related. School of Education has early childhood, childhood and adolescent education. And our Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems has computer science, information systems, and information technology. At Pace, when you apply to the university, you will choose a major or you can apply undecided, but you are able to switch your major. When you're applying, you're not applying specifically to the Dyson College or specifically to the Lubin School and you're not pigeonholed into that. You can change your major, you can double major, you can do a major and a minor, depending on where your pace path will take you. We also have a lot of connections with internships. So last year we had over 20,000 internships posted for our students to apply for on our online platform called Handshake. Students can take internships for credit, students can also take internships and get paid. And some of those internships actually are for both. Our career services office will help you every step of the way, whether you have a resume or you don't, whether you know how to interview or you don't, they will help you to make sure you are prepared to go out there into the world. And it is definitely a success for us. As you can see by the statistic on the screen, uh, about 90% of our students are employed or continuing their, or their education within six months of graduation. In regards to location, so you're probably pretty familiar with where Pace is located, but just to confirm if you're not, uh, we do actually have two campuses. So our one campus is located in New York City, uh, right on the Manhattan side of the Brooklyn Bridge. Our New York City campus is our larger of our two campuses student-wise, so we have a little under 6,000 undergraduate students on the New York City campus. We are a very vertical campus. So everything is located within a five block radius from our main building, including four different residence halls. And we are able to guarantee housing for all four years. About 75% of our first year students do live on campus. Um, and after that, it's around 50 to 60%. But again, guaranteed housing if you're looking for it. We do also have another campus in Pleasantville, New York, specifically in, um, or sorry, Westchester County, specifically in Pleasantville, New York. And this is a more traditional college campus. So it is 200 acres. Uh, it's about 2,500 undergraduate students. We have nature trails. We have a beautiful pond. We have an environmental center on campus. Um, we also have six residence halls and housing is also guaranteed on this campus for all four years. Also up in Pleasantville are all of our division two athletics. So if you are looking to play a varsity sport when you're in college, you will choose the Westchester campus as your main base campus. There is a shuttle running back and forth between the campuses a few times a day. So if you would prefer one campus over the other, but would like to take some classes on the other campus or just go and explore the other campus or maybe go see a, a football game up in Pleasantville, uh, you can definitely take advantage of our shuttle system to move back and forth between the campuses. In regards to the application process, we make it pretty easy when you apply to the university. We will need your application. There is a PACE application. We do also uh, participate in the common application. We'll need all of your official transcripts, two letters of recommendation, your essay or personal statement. And then if you would like to submit SATs or ACTs, you can, but we are test optional. And that was a pre-pandemic decision. So we will not be requiring SATs or ACTs moving forward. If you are admitted into the university, you will automatically receive a merit scholarship and you'll find out what that is right in your acceptance letter. Also at Pace University, we have an honors college and there is automatic consideration for admission into the honors college. Uh, and if you're admitted into honors, you'll find that out right in your decision letter as well. Here are our deadlines for next year. Um, so the first thing is submitting your FAFSA. We want to make sure that all of our students can afford Pace. So applying for need-based aid is something that we definitely encourage students to do early on. We have early decision, early action one, early action two, uh, and regular decision application deadlines. 
If you are considering performing arts, there is an early application deadline, then there is an online pre-screen, and then if you pass that online pre-screen, there is an in-person audition. If you're looking for nursing, that application deadline is our regular decision deadline, which is February 15th. This is the average amount of aid offered to all of our students. So again, submit that FAFSA and submit it early for maximum consideration. And this is my contact information. We are having tours Monday through Saturday. Uh, we'll have events over the summer as well. So I will put the link in the chat on how you can sign up for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so next up we have St. Bonaventure University. Thank you so much. Of course, give me a second while I share my screen. Okay, hopefully everyone, is this good? Wait, it's, it's on my second screen. Give me, a, give me a moment. Can I blame the fact that I'm just coming back from maternity leave so I'm a bit rusty when it comes to presenting? So one minute here. All right, can you see it now? All right, perfect. So thank you, everybody. My name's Katie. Um, I am the coordinator for enrollment marketing and communications at St. Bonaventure. So um, many of you will most likely be working with Tiffany Capella Barlow. She is our um, New York City area recruiter and she's amazing. So um, I can pass along her contact information at the end. Um, so on the screen, you will see an image of our campus. This is the main hub. Everything is pretty close together. So you don't have to walk too far to get anywhere on campus, which is nice if you're running late and like to press that snooze button. Um, St. Bonaventure sits in about 500 acres of camp or acres of land. So um, while we have lots of land, like I said, everything's tight and close together for the students. Um, I guess I should talk about location. We are in Western New York. So we are about a six hour drive from you folks, um, which isn't too terrible. You can make it in a day and we've got a bus system. So um, if you do need to use the bus as transportation, that's absolutely an option, but freshmen are also welcome to have cars on our campus as well. So a little bit about who we are. Um, when you visit Bonaventure or if you talk to others that have attended Bonaventure, if you meet an, an alumni, um, or hopefully visit campus, you will hear a lot about community. We really consider ourselves a, an incredibly close, tight-knit community, but in my eyes, it's more than that. Um, it's definitely a family here at Bonaventure. We are a small family, and like I said, I'm coming back from maternity leave, and I miss my baby so much, of course, but I feel so lucky to have this family at my work, to have these people to go to every day when I have to step away from my family at home because I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I feel so blessed to be a part of this community and family at St. Bonaventure. And I know so many of our students and alumni feel the same exact way. So with that, like I said already, we are a small school. We've got about 2000 undergraduate students. So we've been bringing in freshman class sizes around 500. We are large enough that you're going to meet new people every day, but small enough that you're not going to be a number at our school. That student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1, so you're going to have amazing relationships with professors and um, other staff members on campus so you can use them in the future and they can help you during your time while you are at St. Bonaventure. We have over 50 majors and 46 minors. And some stats we're really proud of, our graduation rates are higher, 20% higher than the national average. And 97% of our students are either employed within six months of graduating or they're in graduate school. So these are our academic programs. I won't leave, uh, read them all off to you, but you can absolutely check these out online. Take a screenshot if you're on your phone for some reason or on your, on your computer, if you can do that. But I'll go through some of the schools that we have here. We've got our School of Business. Um, our School of Business is our most popular school on campus. It is AACSB accredited. Only 5% of business schools hold that accreditation. So we're really proud of our business program here at St. Bonaventure. And within this school, there's a ton of hands-on learning opportunities, lots of internships. There's student money management, which is a club on campus that works on the stock market. And they've got about half a million dollars that they can work with. And they can choose how they want to invest it themselves each year, which is a lot of fun. Um, we've got our School of Education. This school, our students get over a thousand hours of in-classroom experience that'll start your freshman year. So you are more than prepared to run a classroom by the time your senior year rolls around and you got to do student teaching. We've got our School of Communication. Um, this has 
great programs for those, especially interested in sports. We've got a great alumni in this school that work at ESPN. We've got about six or seven. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Woj, who does the NBA reporting. Um, but our students in this school have the opportunity to broadcast our Division I sports games on ESPN+, Plus, which is a really fun, again, opportunity for our students. We've got our School of Arts and Sciences. Science is the second most popular program at Bonaventure following business. Um, then we've got our School of Health Professions, which is relatively new. There's health science, public health, a nursing program. And then um, something that's not on the slide is we have an OT and a PA program that just started the past year as well. And then some combined degree programs if anyone's interested in doing an MD or DO program with George Washington School of Medicine and LECOM. Student life. So um, personally, I think student life is one of the most important parts about that college experience. Um, I wish I would have gotten more involved. It's my biggest regret in college that I didn't get more involved. Um, it is great for resume builders. It's going to help you guys professionally. And at Bonaventure, over 80% of our students are involved in some sort of club sport um, activity on campus. There are intramural and club sports. There's the um, clubs that are related to your major or any academic clubs. And then there's also clubs that are focused around hobbies like video games and um, knitting, wide variety of different things that you guys can get involved in. We do have a study abroad program. You, can, you guys can study abroad for a semester or for a couple weeks in the summertime if you don't go, want to go away for a whole semester. Service opportunities. This is huge and this is something I, I missed in the beginning, but we are a private Franciscan school. So Franciscan is just a branch of the Catholic religion. Um, my coworker describes us as the crunchy hippies of the Catholic religion. We care about the peace, the poor, and the planet. And one of our core values is community service and giving back. So we really focus on not only providing you guys with an amazing education, but we want you guys to also leave here just better people with bigger hearts. And I truly believe Bonaventure does a great job with that. Um, division one athletics, you can see this on the screen. We're one of the smallest division one schools and I'm going to, I'm going slow. So I'm going to skip over a couple of things. Uh, freshman admissions, we're rolling admissions. Application is free. You can apply on our website or the common app. We are test optional. Um, we ha will have you guys send in your transcripts or write an essay. One letter of recommendation is only required for us. And we'll look at that weighted average and we'll take AP credits, college credit credits. We also have a HEOP program and we've got merit scholarships for all of you guys. It doesn't matter you know, when you apply throughout the year. Um, and if you have financial aid questions, I'm gonna skip over that too, since I was talking too long, I'm so sorry. Um, let me know if I can help with anything at the end. Um, I'll, I'll throw some contact information in the chat. Thanks, Kelly. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, Syracuse was not able to join us tonight, but if you all are looking for information regarding them, please contact their admissions office directly. Um, and so now we're going to have an opportunity for our panelists to answer a couple of questions that we think might be helpful for you all. Um, and so first, we are going to start with what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? and you all can order in the way that you present it? Um, I would empower everybody to ask questions. Don't take what you hear at face value. Um, now that you're on the college search, you're gonna have a lot of gratuitous advice from many, many people in your life, loved ones, people down the street, neighbors, everybody's very well-intentioned. But as you do gather all of this information, make sure that you go back to home base, your counselors, make sure you go onto our institutional websites to make sure that information is accurate and talk to us. We're all incredibly friendly, love to chat and would love to see you in person to talk. So I wanna empower all of you to reach out to us to make sure that what you're hearing is accurate and that we can best provide you with the most accurate information and help you through the process. Great advice, Erica. Um, I would also love to add to go visit um, some of these great schools. I, um, I think that used to sort of go without saying, and then we had this crazy global pandemic and we were not able necessarily to go visit places in person. And we learned a lot about them online, which you can certainly do. Um, but uh, now that campuses are primarily back open, um, it's a great opportunity, um, not just to learn the stats and the facts about these different places, because there's gonna be a lot of similar offerings at, at any institution that you might look at, but to really 
really get a feel for the campus, the campus culture, if it's a place you're going to be comfortable, because when you're comfortable, you take risks and you make the most out of your college experience. Um, so very much hope that you come visit us, but visit all the schools that you're considering. I would say learning the terminology is super important. So we all just said a lot of things pretty quickly. Um, and I know myself, I was first generation. And if you would have said, what is the FAFSA? Not what does it stand for, but what even is it? I would have had no idea. Um, so you can ask your counselor. We get these questions all the time. Uh, you can look it up on Google. You can ask your school counselor, but really just make sure you know what it is um, because you could be maybe doing yourself a disservice by not knowing what, what the terminology means. I would agree with everybody, first of all. Um, when you're going through the college search process to go with your gut, it's gonna kind of tie into visiting as many schools as you can. Um, I believe that you're gonna have that gut feeling about which school is meant for you. I know I did. So um, go with that gut feeling. And I'm gonna say, use your admissions counselors to your advantage. We love talking about college. Um, it's, it's, what our, it's what our job is, it's what we do. And it's a lot of fun and it's a really, it's fun for us to work with you guys because we know that there's an energy there that you can't get from any other job. So we want to help you. So no question is stupid. Um, talk to us as much as you can. We're there to advocate for you, whether that be financially or through the admissions process, especially I'm assuming if you're very passionate about the school that you are applying to or visiting or um, want to go to. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I've got too. Thank you all, that was some great advice. The next question that we have is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, I think I talked about, certainly talked about the open curriculum, the fact that there's no core classes and that Rochester and wants students to study what they love and what you're passionate about. And if you don't know what that is, to figure that out while you're on campus. Um, fun fact about Rochester, we are home to the Laser Lab for Energetics, which is home to two of the world's most powerful high energy lasers. So if you're curious as to what it is to actually have a laser that is a house, like the size of a multi, multi floored house, you wanna come and visit us so you can see it. Um, I think often when people think of Salve Regina University in Newport, um, they think about how stunning our campus is. Um, but what I really want you to remember is that it's not just about living in a beautiful place, but this um, amazing natural environment that we find ourselves in is really um, something that truly inspires our students' academics um, while they're at Salve. Um, our uh, campus is really rooted in the community and really uses uh, all of these uh, great surroundings to our students' benefit. Um, and so if you are looking to really be connected to the community that you study in um, and to make the most um, out of that environment, um, I encourage you to come check us out. So I always say that you can't fake New York. And I know all of you know that because you're from New York. Uh, so at Pace, you know, we have amazing connections, whether you want to stay on our New York City campus or want to go up to Westchester, you'll be able to connect with so many companies, get those experiences that are recognizable to make your resume stand out. So by, by the time you graduate, you are career ready um, and that experience will carry you through a lifetime. All right, so Bonaventures, I didn't get to this, but our alumni are some of the best alumni ever. Um, I'm actually not a graduate from St. Bonaventure, but boy, do I wish I was. The alumni here are absolutely insane, and I don't know if anybody knows Bonaventure alum, but they are so passionate, and they visit campus 101 times um, throughout the year just because they love this place so much. And I have been stopped more in an airport wearing my St. Bonaventure gear than any other college sweatshirt or attire. And same with my parents. Um, you coming to Bonaventure will have an incredible support system of current Bonnies and, you know, graduate Bonnie, graduated Bonnies. It's just unbelievable. And they will not only help you guys, you know, while you're in school, but it'll, it'll last a lifetime. They've, they really bend over backwards for our students. 
Um, we just made the NIT the tournament and um, our alumni raised over $50,000 to send our students to watch the men's basketball team play at Madison Square Garden. So that's just a little taste of what the alumni do, but it's amazing. And um, they will help you more than you know. And I think that again, just ties back into the family piece of Bonaventure. So um, yeah. Hey, and then one last question is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Can I underscore, we all have beautiful campuses. You absolutely have to come out and, and I can vouch for that because I think I visited every campus that's currently um, on this presentation. So um, if you get to see us all, you would absolutely fall in love with them. Um, you don't have to have it all figured out. Um, you don't need to know what you want to study. You don't need to know what you want to do for the rest of your life. Certainly, if you do, that's fantastic. You're probably going to change your mind, and that's also okay. Um, once I sat on a panel where a colleague made the recommendation that sometimes not knowing, or rather, knowing what you don't like is a good starting point. So stealing his tip, I'm going to share it with all of you. Start with what you don't like, and then you figure it out from there. But certainly, when you get to college, if you have lots of ideas and you don't have it all figured out, that's the purpose, that's what we want. We want for you to explore and get to know more about yourself and then meet some really amazing people also along the way that'll help you and support you. I think my favorite myth to debunk is that your admission counselor who is reviewing your application is scary. Um, we are not scary. Um, you have met us now. Um, we also are here to support you. Um, we're here to advocate for you. Um, we are excited to read your application and your essay. We are absolutely looking for all those incredible reasons that you're going to be a great great fit at our institution. We're absolutely looking for all the great reasons to admit you and to award you scholarships um, and to help you through this process. Um, so we um, are not uh, sitting behind our desks with a big deny stamp. Um, we very much um, are here for you and we hope that you stay in contact with us. That was also going to be mine because I agree. Counselors are not scary. Um, so often I hear from, or admissions counselors are not scary. So often I hear from students and parents that, you know, they were student was nervous to call and nervous to email, but yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have any others that I can think of right now because that is definitely my biggest myth. I'm gonna I'll try to think of something different because mine was you don't have to figure everything out because I changed my major four times so um, it's really okay to not have any idea what you want to do, but um, my my next big I guess my next piece of advice or a myth I would want to debunk is you don't have to be at least for Bonaventure you don't have to be the perfect student we will take students that don't have you know an A hundred average in everything. Our average student has an 89 GPA. So it's okay to not have the best test scores or the best high school transcript. Um, because like all the other colleges says, we do a holistic review. We look at, you know, the whole person, you earn more than just the grades you received throughout high school, especially over the past two years. Um, we know with COVID, it has been tough. Students have had to adapt to virtual learning, which is new. And while some did great, some didn't. So we really consider that. So don't be afraid if you didn't perform your best. Um, let us know. That's another reason to use your admissions counselor. Let us know where you struggled and what you want to do better um, when you're going to apply to colleges. Because again, we want to we want you to be here as much as you do. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. That has been some really great information you've shared with our participants tonight. And so that is going to wrap us up. I want to thank everyone for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we really appreciate any feedback that you're willing to give us. We encourage you to Continue to seek out that information you need. And so if you didn't ask a question tonight, don't hesitate to reach out to each one of these representatives um, in order to, to figure out what kind of more different, more information that may not have been able to be presented in this span of time that you really want us to know about. And also this 
session will be recorded. And so if you had to step out for a moment, or if you have a friend who you think would find this information to be helpful to them in their search, you can definitely go onto our website at strivescan.com backslash Brooklyn Tech. So again, thank you all very much and have a good evening. Bye-bye.